All right, so we're back in now. Uh, we're gonna map out where we're gonna drill the holes and uh, put the wires going into the project box. Um, I plan to mount the Arduino and the CNC shield inside the project box with a fan, a 24 volt fan, um, going into the uh, attached to the lid so that I have some airflow going out. And I'll probably do some slits or holes <clears throat> in the side where um, where the air can escape because the air will be going in, and I want to have um, nice uh, air flow over the these, uh, over these chips because they'll get quite hot uh, since they're running at uh, at two amps or 1.5 amps or something like that. Um, so I, I planned it out. So hopefully, um, combined with the power source in the back of the stable 2015, uh, I've mapped it out that. Uh, on the top, I'll have one switch for the uh, for the spindle power. So the spindle will be powered by the also the 24 volt uh, power source as well. So they'll have a, there'll be a switch on top for the the, the spindle control. Um, then I'll have the Y axis wire going in this way. I'll have the uh, spindle wire going in here. Um, and on this side, I'm gonna have the main power source going in. And I'm gonna have the spindle power source going in this side as well, um, because the power source will be facing this way. So it'll be a, a short cable. And on this side, I'm gonna have the Y axis, the X axis, and then the USB connection uh, coming out this way. And then I'm going to have the main power switch on the bottom. So when you power the whole system on, you're gonna to have to turn it on from the bottom, which is good, because you're not gonna accidentally hit it. And then I'm going to have the um, my USB or my controller box thing, not really the controller box, but the, um, how do you call it, the, uh, the pendant, the pendant with my e-stop and all this stuff uh, coming off of it. So that's going to come off the bottom. So all of the sides are going to have something coming out of it, uh, but it should look pretty clean. So we're going to tuck all of the wires inside here. So uh, let's get going and drill some holes. So let's see if that fan fits. And it's going to fit just fine in there, like so. And then we'll get some holes drilled and then we'll get uh, get it screwed in. All right, I made a design change already. <laughs> um, I actually decided to, I'm going to mount the fan on the outside of the box here because I noticed that when I drill the hole, um, it, I can mount the fan on the outside and blow the air directly onto the um, the chips on there. So it'll leave a little more room for the uh, nerd nest that's going to happen on the inside because I know for sure that there's going to be a lot of cable management. Um, so <clears throat> I'll just change my schematic. Uh, to mount this on the outside and then I'll change my wiring holes. So it's good that I drilled this first because I knew that this was the biggest part and kind of where it was going to be and I can situate the, um, the the Arduino there. Also the benefit of having the Arduino on the bottom is that the USB port is going to be sticking at the bottom which is um, a nice because if I want to reconnect and connect just in case if things happen. So. All right, so the, the project box, I need something to mount the boards and other stuff too. So I took a piece of plexiglass I have. This is a sample kit from probably ePlastics or something. Um, and I've uh, shaped it so that its interior is the is the same as the shape and then uh, chamfer the corners of it on my spindle sander. So this should drop in here perfect with a nice friction fit. That'll be where I'll mount the boards and stuff like that. So I've taken the Arduino board and then mat matched it up with the uh, plexiglass that I cut on the interior of this place. Um, so I put it right here and I mapped out where the hole is. So I drew a 3 8 inch hole and then used a square file to, um, to square out the hole. And now this is a perfect fit for the USB cord. So that's going to stick on the bottom so that'll be nice uh, and protected. So I'm going to recess this in so that so when I plug the USB, key, USB cord in, um, it's actually inside the box. Uh, that'll be really nice. All right, so what I've done, I've taken the plexiglass out now, and then I've uh, drilled it with these 1 inch holes. Uh, I'm going to take an M3 tap because that's what I'm going to use to attach the Arduino to this board. So I'm going to take an M3 tap and then tap it um, so that it has some threads to bite in. So you have to be really careful because plexiglass is quite soft. Um, and I'm going to do this off camera. So here we go. The holes have been tapped with an M3, and here's an M3 screw, so that'll be nice to uh, once we screw it in be nice for attaching uh, the Arduino to the board. Okay, so the Arduino is mounted nice and securely inside. I actually used some uh, M3 nuts as spacers uh, so that this is actually a little bit proud uh, from the surface here. Just so I don't want a contact being squished on there. And the alignment doesn't seem to be affected at all for the USB cord. So let's get working on the other stuff. So now the switch for my spindle power is going to be here. So this is the top of the box, or the orientation of it. Uh, drilled a couple holes and then again use the square file and then this should just drop right in 
like so and snap into place. So that'll be a nice clean way of putting the power supply or the power supply for the spindle. So I'll do that same with the power, the power button, which may go on the front, uh, which may go on the side. I'm not quite sure yet, but um, that's definitely the way to go. This is a nice clean application of it. So this is the completed top of the box. Um, the hole's been drilled. So this is a 5 16th hole and this is a half inch hole. The half inch hole, um, I'm gonna be able to pass the connectors for the X axis through and I'm gonna have some um, nylon sleeve that covers it. So it'll be a nice and tight. Uh, and then this uh, lamp cord is going to be through here so that that's the spindle uh, spindle power So that's the top of the box. So let's get working on the sides and see what happens And using the uh, a drill bit and then starting a hole and then using the square file to open up the hole um, That's going to be the main power on for the whole system So that's going to be on the side here. So when this is mounted on the side like this on the box This is the back of the machine. So when this box is mounted like this the on switch for the whole system is on going to be this side, so I'm not going to accidentally trip it. So it'll be nice to have it off the side like this, and then the spindle will be on here, and then the whole system on there. All right, so all the holes I've been drilled. Um, now that uh, we're going to try and do some really quick wiring before uh, I, I tidy everything up. Um, so these two are going to be the main power inputs here. Um, like I said, the spindle power switch, the spindle power out. Um, this is going to be an XY uh, hole. This is the Z hole. Um, and this is the main power switch uh, down here is going to be the, um, the uh, Pendant wires and then the USB cable. So all the holes been drilled. Theoretically, they should work uh, I have to mount the fan too. So let's try and do that next Here's a trick that um, I love to use when I'm installing things um, I use you buy you can buy these M3 inserts meant for injection molding um, So I took the fan and then drilled out the hole to 3 16 um, Which is undersized for these threaded uh, these threaded inserts and they have knurling on the outside of them So basically just to line up with the hole um, Press them in and then they'll friction fit and this is going to be easy to mount from underside of the uh, lid of the enclosure all right, so I made a mistake. Um, not really a mistake. I decided to uh, remount and reposition the fan so that uh, it's more directly over the Arduino, and this hole was not. So I just redrilled some holes and uh, some mounting brackets on this side. So I'll probably make a plate or something. I really wanted to make a plate for some cool stuff anyway. So um, that will work out better. Um, so this is mounted on uh, with some two screws in the back, so it's nice and secure. Uh, and then I've also fed the uh, middle long notch uh, with a file to feed the. the the power cords in. All right, the nerd nest has already started. So I've wired up uh, both the main power switch and the spindle power switch, and they'll have leads. Uh, one of the leads for the spindle power switch goes out to a longer wire, so that actually goes out to the spindle, and then the leads to go to the power source go to the left because that's where the power source is going to be. So the power source will be like this, and it's going to be a nice connection, a nice short connection to that. Uh, the main power switch again is going to be over here, uh, and then that'll interrupt the signal going to the, uh, the landline and the neutral. So I've got the main power all, all wired up and I believe I have the uh, fan wired up to the main. So when I turn on the main power for the drivers and everything, uh, the fan's gonna turn on at the same time. So that's a good sign. <laughs> um, and then uh, I think the next thing is that we're gonna hook up the driver, uh, the driver cords uh, to the Arduino and see if it moves. So now we have everything uh, all hooked up here. It's not actually fed through the holes or everything, but I just want to make sure that the electronics still function as they should after all this wiring and stuff. So um, as soon as I turn this on, I should be able to hear the fan go. That's a good sign. And then I have my Arduino plugged in and I can't see the Arduino uh, light, but definitely uh, we'll connect to Gerbil and see what happens. Looks like it's connected to Gerbil, which means the Arduino is powered. So there's no lost connections or anything. Um, and then we're going to go to the axis control and we're going to put a feed rate of 500 and it's a good sign and we're going to go for 10 that's also a good sign we're going to shift left and right and the Z So good. We're getting a little bit of binding on the Z axis, so that's probably due to the speeds I've set up, so I'll have to fix that in a bit. But everything looks really healthy, so I think the next step is going to be feeding the wires through and then mounting on the uh, back side of the machine. So I made a huge mistake. Uh, maybe not a huge mistake. I definitely made a small mistake, and I hooked up the fan to the two, 120 volt by accident, and there was a crossfire somewhere, and then I heard a pop, and so pretty sure I fried my fan, but that's okay because everything else is safe.
it. So I'm just gonna continue forward wiring this up and then uh, we'll see how it goes. I've already gone ahead and attached the power source um, on the back of the machine with some double-sided tape. Uh, it's the foam tape stuff, so that's it's, it helps pretty good. So I'm gonna put the other one on here and then we're gonna wire up the rest of them. Because right now, um, I want to have everything in situ before I get everything in. Really tricky wiring. <laughs> Uh, I got the spindle working, so now let's see here. It's all plugged in, uh, power source is mounted, and so is the uh, control box here. So this is the on for the whole power. So the power source light came on, that was good. And then we're gonna turn on the spindle. So it looks like it's working. And we have our cable relief here. So I have this up uh, with some sleeve attached to it so that when it moves back and forth, it'll go uh, be with the axis as well. So this stepper motor is going to be here. I'm hopefully, hopefully there's no uh, like electromagnetic interference with it, but uh, well, let's let's see how it goes. Everything is wired in. Uh, I have cable management going for, for stress relief on all of the, the joints here. I just need to tuck everything away. I'm gonna plug it in and then before I wrap this up, I'm gonna make sure that uh, things are able to move around. All right, here's a moment of truth. Everything's wired up. Uh, I haven't tucked everything in yet, but we're gonna power it up and we're gonna move it around and see if it works. So the power source is on, that's a good sign. The spindle works, and I have Gerbil loaded up with Gerbil controller, and we're gonna jog around and see if it works. That sounds awesome. I'm gonna move it back. And we're gonna move the table. And we're gonna move the Z axis. Z axis is moving really well. While I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, so I've taken, uh, we're gonna work on the pendant here. So I have a pretty industrial piece of um, equipment here. So I've already described this. It already has a e-stop, it has a go stop, um, and I'm gonna attach a momentary switch right here. So this is this momentary switch is going to be my uh, reset. So it's gonna be my control X, my soft reset. This will be my stop or pause. This will be my resume, and obviously this will be my e-stop. Uh, so it's gonna be pretty simple. Um, and I've, what I've taken here is a uh, length of DuPont wire, and it's already kind of pre-made into those jumper, the DuPont connectors, so that'll be really easy. So I split them up into pairs, and I'm gonna wire them up into these things, and then pretty much put a sleeve on it, and then put it in the machine, and we're ready to go. All right, everything is wired in. So all of the connections for the e-stop, the resume, the pause, the abort are all wired in, and this is now available to be mounted on the side, like so. Uh, so it'll be a nice compact um, package. So let's get that going, wrap everything up. I'm gonna test the things out before I wrap up uh, this and uh, we are going to be running a job real quick. I haven't wrapped this up the back up, but uh, definitely have powered on the system and I'm gonna run a file and uh, if uh, I'm able to pause and start and then uh, that should be, I can do an e-stop as well uh, and then we'll go from there. So we're gonna begin, there's the safety. There's the pause, just pause good. Resume, pause, resume. And okay, that's weird. So it looks like the e-stop is actually when it's closed in, the system is on. Um, and then when I release it, it uh, gives me uh, it, it terminates the the uh, the whole thing. So I have this, I think this is a wrong switch. Uh, this may be uh, a normally closed um, or normally open. So we'll see how it goes. I can swap it around, see if, I, see if it, it works out. But everything all with the pause and the um, go button work and the reset probably works too. And it looks like the abort works for reset. That's awesome. So here's the whole package. Everything seems to be working well, except for my fried <laughs> my fried uh, fan. I'm gonna get a new fan and then put it in there. Um, I swapped out the leads for my abort. My abort will be this, the e-stop, and also uh, this is now my e-stop. This is now my e-stop. It's smaller, I won't hit it by accident. Uh, this will still be my stop and go. And uh, yeah, abort will be here, and I think that will work just fine. 
One last detail, the abort will be the e-stop, so actually I just pulled it out and that will be the abort, so that's an always closed button. Uh, here's the resume, here's the hold, and here's the reset button or the e-stop. And a few more labels, here's the spindle on and off, and then the main power off and on. So I'm pretty excited. It's self-contained, I'm able to pick it up, make some really precise work, and move it wherever I need to go. There we go, first cut of this machine. Everything's super solid, really smooth. The real spindle is very, very rigid, so it's making it a very tight cut. The real test is when it starts taking the big curves. Right now it's just cutting the recesses for some screws. So everything worked out perfectly. It looks like it cut really nice. I'm gonna have to uh, extract this from the uh, from the piece of material, and then we'll take a look after. All right, so this is the part that comes off the machine. Um, this is fresh. I'm, I'm very happy with it. The edges look very nice. This is really old um, white oak, so it's very hard, um, and there's no steps in the side whatsoever, even where the part where it was plunging in. Um, the rigidity of the Spindle itself is very good. I'm very happy with the way this turned out. Um, I'm very happy with the self-containedness of this whole thing. Um, and this is a scale for a slingshot so I can attach them with uh, those threaded inserts I talked about. So um, th thank you for watching. This was uh, definitely an adventure in itself. Um, and uh, this is my third CNC machine. I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. Um, and I think I'm gonna add some details. It kind of gives, this whole thing kind of gives me a feel of um, of a Ghostbuster trapper. So I'm, I think I'm gonna add some yellow things and maybe like a couple of Ghostbuster stickers on it uh, just because it's gonna be a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. Uh, if this is your first time here, thanks for coming in and uh, thanks for spending time with me. Uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, like, share, and uh, stay tuned for more CNC projects. Thank you.